All right. Hello, everybody. I feel weird introducing us because Catherine and I are actually co-hosting this awesome episode that has been probably months in the making at this point. So I'm excited we're finally doing this. We are we are talking with the elusive Mr. Fox, or as our friend Shanti from Aquarius Rising Africa says, Mr. Foxy Fox. Uh, so, and according to all the emails I've received about Mr. Fox, a lot of the ladies in this community do find him to be a mysterious little fox. So I'm so glad to be here with Mr. Fox and my friend Catherine Edwards here today to talk about the law of one. How are you today, Catherine and Mr. Fox? How are you guys doing? I'm doing well, good. Let Mr. Fox go first because that's a, this is the important one. So how are you doing, Mr. Fox? I'm doing well. I'm excited to share this information with you all. Great. And I'm doing very, very well. And I've been so looking forward to this, both of you, but particularly you, Mr. Fox. One, I love foxes. And secondly, the reason I've been so looking forward to this is this is something I know a little bit about, not but not a lot, but it's coming up into the awareness and linking into so many other areas that people are looking into. So introducing this to people that aren't really expert on the law of one and understanding how this knowledge could not be more important at this time is going to be so valuable for all our listeners. So Thank you so much for doing that. So can we start, um, Bryce and Mr. Fox, by asking, um, Mr. Fox, I would love to know, how did the law of one first come to your awareness and how much, how long have you been studying it for? Okay, I, I've been studying the law of one, I'd say, for the better part of 20 years now. Um, it just sort of fell in my lap through a friend <clears throat> that was moving to India and he needed a place to store uh, some of his stuff and part of his library. And uh, I had a big place at the time. And so, you know, I offered to store it for him. And, and so he gave me this big pile of books that I just, you know, added to my, my library of books. And, and one day I was just looking through some of the stuff that, that he had given me and, and the book sort of stood out. And so I pulled it out and, and started reading it. It happened to be the first book in the in the four book series um, of the law of one they call it the, the raw material anyway i sat down with it and started reading and it just drew me in and uh and, you know and, and it just grew from grew from there i immediately after i got done with that book went out and bought the other three in the series and uh and just started studying them you know it, and it's not something they're not books that you can just you know sit down and read all the way through you know it's really deep information and the way that it's it's uh sort of done is is question answer and the answers by Ra is um you know could be very complex and um and, and sometimes a little obscure and takes a little while to decipher and really sit with and sort of contemplate with and so you know for years i would you know read a few pages put it down really digest it think about it and then sort of move forward from there. And so for me, you know, I've, I've probably written the, uh, read the books at least, at least 10 times over each of the books, you know, and still going back. And I can still 20 years later read um, just passages from it. And, and, and it still blows my mind on information that I missed because it's so, it's so dense. Can we clarify too? I just because we were talking about this before we started um, shooting, and I think because I mentioned, and you guys, Mr. Fox was the person who introduced me to the law of one. And when he started talking to me about it years ago, it just resonated. It was like that makes that actually makes a lot of sense um, for the template of spirituality. But when we're talking about when I say the law of one, I think a lot of people think I'm talking about some etherical just law. This is an actual book series, an actual pretty, uh, very complex philosophy that was given to people, what, like in the 80s? Um, they, but you, you talked about this with Shanti a little bit that, you know, you, and I, I kind of wanted you to touch on this a little bit, too, that you're not somebody that really thinks highly of channeling 99.9% .9 of the channelers you've said you don't even really mess with because it's it's not it's not accurate but this right. really stuck out for you because of the amount of work that went into it so can you kind of touch on that a little bit yeah so the work stemmed from 
one of the main people in the group because the group it was a group of three people that did this channeling it was um it was don elkins carla ruckert and jim mccarthy which is no longer around and uh carla ruckert just passed away recently um so don elkins it's, it came from his his research on ufos and he started to compile all this information uh dating back from from when he was younger in the 60s where people would have contact with the beings on on ufos and how these people were getting basically downloaded with messages from these beings and some of these messages were very positive talking about a future that we were moving into and so you know his first his first book is called secrets of the ufo and i think you can still get it it's a, it's just a little self-published book that has excerpts from different books uh that give these uh these channel uh, they're sort of like channelings that these people did spontaneous channelings um when these people you know people from the past would would have these ufo encounters you know they would have these messages downloaded and then they would either uh relay these messages through hypnotic sessions or they just remembered them you know they were just sort of stuck in their head and so anyway that led don elkins down a path of trying to figure out could you create a situation where someone could intentionally channel other beings whether they be from ufos or from other worlds that could beam that information down so he started doing this research and trying to figure out a controlled environment where you could set it up to where you could actually channel these these beings in real time uh, intentionally and so that's what led to eventually them setting things up where they started to channel raw the first the first and i say person but it's really, really not a person that they're channeling in this sense it's they're channeling it's coming from what they call a social memory complex and so when you when you when you reach the densities above fourth density or sorry densities above third density that the the consciousness of the people of a planet create what's called a social memory complex and so you know they may say they're channeling from from Ra, but it's really coming from the consciousness of all the beings because they sort of have to merge together when you reach that level of 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 evolution anyway the first the first being or social memory complex that they channeled was called haton and haton was giving very similar messages to Ra. But these messages were being relayed through someone who wasn't entering into the same state that Carla Ruckert entered into during the channelings of Ra. And I know I'm sort of getting into obscure stuff, and I'm, I'm not ex ex explaining the backstory mm -hmm. clearly, and I'll try to do that now. So what makes the, the Ra material so unique from all these other channelings that they were they were attempting to do and channelings that came before them was that they set it up where Carla Ruckert would lie on a table and she would go completely unconscious. And she wasn't aware of what she was saying during these sessions. And and she would start to talk in this this strange, very slow, monotone voice. And that's when the raw material started to come come forth. They they switched over from the Hatone material and when they set up a more controlled environment. And so there were only three people in the room. That was Don Elkins, Jim McCarthy, and then Carla Ruckert as the as the the channel that Ra would speak through. Are you on the same page? And they, they did yeah. this. This isn't, I want people to be very clear because we have a lot of fake spiritualists out there who are claiming hypnosis, blah, blah, blah. But these people, and I know I, I've spoken years ago, I started to speak about this. I, I put the links down below in the description box where I kind of talked about this group, this trio of people. They had spent like years 
preparing for this from what I remember researching. Like they worked oh. together for a very long time before they even started to attempt to use Carla as kind of the conduit. And something you had said to me is that when you go under hypnosis the way that she did, it's actually very dangerous. It's an actually very dangerous situation to put yourself in. And Ra kind of spoke on that. So I, I and we don't have to go into the details of that. People can research this for themselves to understand the intricacies of this. But I want to make that clear that these were not people that took some little course online and then five minutes later were claiming to put people under hypnosis and claiming to get, have all these answers and all these messages, they really did their due diligence and really worked at this together, like a full-time job for y decades before mm -hmm. all of this came right. about. Yeah. And that's, um, and that's sadly, that's something that's really missing. I think in the spiritual community now is people don't understand that this takes a lot of time. Um, and I, I wanted to, to ask, so let's, let's talk about, and you kind of spoke about this, like who, because you'll say the raw material, the law of one, they're kind of in interchangeable as the same thing. So who is raw? Let's just kind of, I know you just kind of said who raw was, but can we, because I think right. a lot of people confuse it with the Egyptian raw when I don't, from what you've said, it's not the same being, correct? It, I think it, it is and it isn't. I mean, because they do talk about how they were the ones that were responsible for the building of the pyramids in Egypt and also their group split off. And, and so there was another part of their group that was responsible for working with the, the people, the cultures in, in South America and it, with them building their pyramids. And so they did have a history here. And they also said that they came to the planet during Atlantis, uh, but they decided not to engage with, with the people of Atlantis. So they came to our planet 11,000 years ago during the time of Atlantis, okay. but they decided not to, to engage with, with that culture. And so they left and they came back a couple thousand years later to the people of Egypt. And they, and actually it was, it was Akhenaten that mm -hmm. they had contact with because they said that his consciousness and his, his teachings were the closest to the law of one. So they, they, they felt find, like they could so They find a person wherever they're going, they find a person who, who was, would be open consciously to receiving their message basically. Right. Yeah. And, but yeah. And, and it's, it's also not just one person. It's all a, also a, a calling, you know, it doesn't have to be necessarily a conscious calling, but they feel a, a calling with that population. They're calling for help. And so that's, that's what brings them down to engage with, with different cultures. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, because the collective consciousness, we're going to come on to more in a minute because that's a key part. But for people that have never heard of the law of one, obviously it's a huge body of information. I mean, it really is. I've only started looking into it relatively recently and it's absolutely fascinating. But Mr. Fox, is there an overarching principle that would sort of sum up some of the key messages of the law of one? So if someone's never heard of it, how would you start to explain what the law of one is actually about and why it's so relevant to us now that's a good question and I, and I find i find that difficult to to really sum up mm. what the law of one is other than the pursuit of the one infinite creator yeah and, and there's there's so many different levels of that but it's to eventually merge with the one infinite creator and to know that you are not separate from the one infinite creator yeah and that yeah. There, there's a certain path that we take actually there's two paths you can take either a service to self or a service to others they're teaching the service to others yeah and so let's, um, let's clarify that too service to others would be the positive path positive polarity right. service mm -hmm. to self would be the negative polarity right so just and so they, consider, they consider both of those legitimate paths to the creator. 
so can I ask, being very, okay, so we can start to see how this is really linking into, um, we're being very careful with our words here, but with events that people are aware of that's going on in the world now. But yeah. if self, if service to self mm-hmm. is negative polarity, yeah. how would that fit in to people that, for example, study um, or, or serve religion such as Satanism? Well, that I mean, you know, they they're learning through through Satanism or, or Luciferianism, the service to self. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so you know, you're working towards polarizing negative. Yeah, which you know, which, which is a very hard path. Yeah. Um, yeah we back up a little bit and just kind of go through because that's such an important thing Catherine just but, hit on. Yeah. Something that we spoke about earlier today and we've spoken about many times and I want to I hope I'm making this clear when you started talking to me Mr. Fox about the law of one which was years before any of this started happening. Yeah. It started to really change the way I perceive the world around me including myself. Yeah. And when all of this, these shenanigans started happening, it made a lot of sense as to why they were happening. And something that we hear in our community a lot is, oh, the bad guys are gone. They're gone. And no, that's not correct because the bad guys are also what they call harvesting too. So can we kind of back up? And Because I think Catherine Hill something so important that we really want people to understand. Um, and so... When we talk about density, can we just quickly go through the different densities first so we understand where they merge together and then where they separate? Sure. Yeah, we could do that. But we sort of got off topic with with who who Ra was because there's a little bit more that I can go I can go over with that. Um, okay, sort of right. Jumped out of that because I was explaining, you know, how they visited during the time of Egypt and how they were responsible for for helping them build the pyramids. And they were coming to share a technology with us that really helped them in their third density cycle. Yeah. And so that technology was using the pyramidal shape. So they said that the use of shapes along with crystals together. And you can use that for, for healing but also, yeah. But also, you can you can use that that shape and crystals to help you learn the lessons that that you need to learn, so you could graduate into fourth density. So they brought that technology and was off and were offering that technology to us. And what had happened was, instead of instead of us using that technology for the betterment of everyone in the planet, it was sort of hijacked and, and you, it w- was only reserved for, you know, their royalty. And so that threw the ho- their whole plan off. And so to us, we could say, you know, that was a huge mistake. Mm-hmm. And sort of in a way, they could say, yeah, that was a mistake, but also from their level of understanding, there are no mistakes. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's easy. <laughs> that's sort of easy for them to say, <laughs> but that's sort of what started to throw this planet into such chaos, because they give an example of how how relatively easy it was for for their planet when they because they're from Venus, and so you know how it didn't take them so long to graduate into fourth density positive unlike us who were it were we're nearing the very end of our se- our 75,000 year cycle of third density and in our planet there's not many people on the planet that are going to be graduating into fourth density positive when our planet shifts yeah and so they're still here with us helping to remedy what that technology that they gave us way back then has done to our planet and the beings on the planet. I think we're still reaping 
that sort of mistake. Well, and that's, for that, that's, for that, what we could say sort of a, is, would be considered a mistake. And that's where, because you've talked to me a lot about, you know, with the darkness, the negative polarity, the light polarity, which I say all the time on my channel because it makes absolute sense that when we look at things like the pyramids, the crystals, anything, darkness can't create anything. It can only steal from the light. And so these beings, these beings brought this technology, these pyramids, these stuff to planet Earth to try to help us in our graduation. But because this is a planet of choice, the elite got a hold of this technology that was meant for the good and have manipulated it for the bad. And so isn't that why Raw also, what is Raw also called? They, you, there's another name they call themselves, correct? The Brothers and Sisters of Sorrow. Because they mm -hmm. feel bad that they accidentally they were trying to help us with a well i wouldn't say they feel bad they don't necessarily feel bad they, i think that it's more that they feel responsible mm -hmm. for the you know? for the and, and coming from their level there there's a certain amount of uh of naivete on their part you know when you're at such a high level of, of six density it, it's it's hard in your in your billions of years remo removed from from your previous third density cycle you know, even with all the awareness that they have, they still have a hard time judging what's going to be the most beneficial and how is, is our message going to be taken? Because they said when they came down, they walked, they walked amongst the people and they were teaching. But they said that, that for, for everything that they said, everything that they taught, we interpreted it that in, in, a multitude they said for for every word uttered people people had 30 different understandings of it you know and so they came with the best of intentions but once they were here for a while and they gave us this technology and these teachings it was so quickly perverted mm. by it's, us it's you know so through a lack of understanding that yeah. it just it just th completely threw us off instead of helping it actually in a way it, it hindered us and it wasn't necessarily their fault yeah yeah and we see that so often when we look at technological advancements or spiritual advancements or knowledge advancements whatever you might look, like to look at it in all areas where most of these tools can it's not the tool that's inherently good or bad it's right who's behind it right. and this is what really grasped me now i just wanted to say for anyone that's not familiar with this material all the sessions were recorded so you can read the transcripts of those rec um, rec um recordings which are in the book so you can go into this in a lot of detail because obviously we're just introducing a lot mm -hmm. of the concepts today right and i mean you know i have to skip over a lot of stuff it's so it's so dense i i i have a hard time with with summing it up even with all the study that i've done yeah yes. there's so many things that that, that that they've said that like i said could be interpreted in many different ways and i'm trying to do my best to really narrow it down and to and to simplify it but it's not it's not so simple yeah. and that's and that's something we you know i've known you for a very long time now and um and Catherine, I'm just going to put it out there. Catherine, Shanti, everybody you're filming with knows who you are in real life and, and knows your relationship to me and how long we've known each other. And I will tell you guys uh, watching right now, um, you and I have known each other for such a long time. And we have had so many in-depth conversations just over one of the teachings of Raw in our years because it is so complex and it is so... Um, it, there's just so many different, there's a, there's a depth, there's just this, this never ending depth to what they're saying. And so I want to clarify before we go back and look at the densities, um, Mr. Fox on, um, on Aquarius Rising Africa, we had, there was somebody who asked if you were in the system, if you were a Freemason and that made me laugh because I know you in person and just to see you standing in one of those aprons made me giggle. Um, <laughs> so uh, that would be hysterical. So I'm going to ask you straight up, Mr. Fox, are you in the system and are you a Freemason? Absolutely not. And actually, are you are the one who told me, weren't you, about the uh, the crimes, weren't you? I told you about what? You're the one that kind of told me about all the crimes of the controllers, right? Oh, totally. Yeah. Uh huh. You're responsible yeah. for really waking me up to a lot of stuff over time. Yeah. Before uh -huh. all the shenanigans happen. Now, Mr. Fox, um, 
So you're not in the system at all. You have just everything. And this is something you spoke about with Shanti too, which I'll just, I'll just say again, in yeah. the, in the, in the law of one, the light, the positive polarity often will always want to share their teachings. They don't hide anything. They want to share their teachings where right. the darkness doesn't do that, which we can get into more of a conversation about that. So everything you're saying right now, and, and, and we were prepping for this show and talking about it. I kept telling you, don't worry about going into so much detail. Just give an overall review because we're going to put the links in the description box because everything you're telling people is not something you learned in some lodge, is it? No, uh, -uh. it's not. No, it's, it all, like, all, it's all in the books, you know, and also it comes from me, you know, contemplating this, you know, what I've read, you know, for many, many years. And then also, you know, looking into my own life and, and how I can apply that to my life and, and also, you know, what I've read and what I see in the world and how, how that all plays together, you know? And I will say too, something when I, I told you about that comment, you, you were very kind in your response. You didn't respond to it, but you were very kind. And you said, you said, you know, I can understand how, I'm just paraphrasing what you said. You said, I can understand how people who are just now waking up to, to true spirituality would be confused that there are people out there that have been studying this stuff for 20 and 30 years. And so right. I want to put that into perspective that just because you're new to true spirituality does not mean that there are other humans who, who are also, a lot of people aren't new to this. A lot of people, and you, I know you as a human being, you've been a seeker your whole life. I know you grew up on military bases with your family and you saw things there and it made you question not bad things like I'm not talking about that just basic stuff and so and you can elaborate on whatever you want to elaborate on that but just the uh, the idea because you're not someone that I mean you've had teachers but you don't take authority well I couldn't see you like being ordered to do something because that's why you own your own business so um, right. so it just cracked me up so no guys Mr. Fox and, and Catherine and Shanti and the people that film with Mr. Fox are aware of why he is hiding his identity and I think if people understood what that reason was they would understand and why he is hiding his identity it's for safety purposes um all that and i look like shit on zoom <laughs> <laughs> well, I, yes i'd quite like to be wearing an outfit now one of these things <laughs> mr fox that i wanted to cover one of the things i found most fascinating looking at the um early transcripts from some of the early sessions yeah. was that raw this um social memory complex that they're channeling yeah finds it hard to look at us humans on the 3D Earth at the moment as separate entities. Now, one of the reasons why I find this so interesting is we're talking about, we have a lot of people talking about the energy of the planet, the collective consciousness of the planet. Yeah. So how important is that understanding that when you move up the dimensions that they don't see or read us almost as individual entities. It's more of a collective consciousness. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, they could see they could see us in, a, in many different ways, and and I don't remember reading anything about how they would see us all as as one because they definitely hear they definitely hear separate callings. Yeah, for for assistance and help. Um. So and you know it's important. It, it's Ideally, it's important for those in service to others that we come together and uh, and sort of move together into into fourth density, positive. Yeah, but that's extremely difficult now. You know, we're all being fragmented through you know so many different ways, and, and so fragmented because. Yeah. Well, let's, as we talk about the clip, can we go back and just go through, like, just, just, you don't have to go into much detail, but what are, so we have first density, second density, third density, which is where we are now. And all of these are on the same, are existing on the same planet. And then fourth density is where it's split. So can you kind of just, what is first, what's a first density planet? What's a first density object of consciousness? Okay, well, <laughs> let's back up a little bit and say, so, so a planet is an entity. Mm -hmm. You could say that as you as you raise up in densities, eventually you'll make it to a density where you become a planet. Yeah. And so that planet 
before that or that entity which they call a logos before that that logos or that that entity creates itself into a planet it contemplates how it's going to how how it's going to grow so it's potentiated itself it's decided how its first density needs it's to form. It's almost like it has a soul contract density. too. So it's like the yeah, planet has totally. a soul contract. And it's, and it's got, so it's yeah. got a plan and it potentiates itself. And so it understands what the parameters are for growth. Yeah. And so it forms itself on all these layers. And then it comes into being. And then it has to play out through billions and billions of years. And so that planet has to start in first density and then slowly over time the creatures and the elements on that planet need to grow and evolve along with the planet itself yeah mm -hmm. and so when the planet first starts out it starts out in first density and that's called the cycle of awareness and that lasts for approximately two billion years and during that time everything starts out in chaos sort of, you know, energy undirected and random. And slowly, over these billions of years, a consciousness, a self-awareness is, is formed through, through light coming in and fire and, and those elements banging against one another and the water molecules turning into steam. And eventually, over these billions of years, these elements start to come together and organize. And as they organize, you know, the, the, the water forms into, into rivers and the earth forms into mountains and everything starts to collect together. And, and like I said, it starts to form these things, oceans and lakes and valleys. And that's a form of, of these elements creating self-awareness and consciousness. And that's that's the first density cycle, and so eventually so after so after so this so late after the hold what's on, that? So first density planet, just for people who are brand new to this, does not have any animals, does not have any humans. It is right. all plant life knowing itself. So that's like a first density object is plants, minerals, right? Earth, ground, right? Okay, so I just want to make that clear. So then once it's able. To like plants, to plants. No, there's going to be no plant. There's going to be no plants. No plants. On first on first density, first density. The only what they call entities that are on the planet are water, fire, air, and earth. So the elements. It's just the elements. Yes. Elements and the elements are reacting with one another. Yeah, and that's where they they start to gain consciousness by organizing themselves slowly organizing themselves and to the point to where they're organized enough that then out of that grows second density so then second density that will start and that's the law that's the longest density of a planet and they call that the cycle of growth and that's where you know little little organisms can start to form in these lakes and these rivers and these oceans or out of the earth and then slowly over time, those creatures, plants and animals, start to gain, start to start to gain some form of, of consciousness. Yeah, and then they they start to reach for the like like a plant, for instance, how a plant starts to reach for the light. Mm -hmm. That's that's that creature, that entities path towards the creator towards the light and so after and that's the longest density that lasts for about you know four and a half billion years a planet will go through second density that's when animals are introduced correct when we start right. to see wildlife introduced into uh -huh. consciousness yes uh-huh yeah and so eventually as you these animals start to progress through through second density the planet starts to shift into third density where these planets where these um where these entities start to become self-aware 
So they call third density the density, the cycle of self-awareness, and it's the shortest density, lasting approximately seventy-five thousand years. So that makes that means our timeline on Earth is way off from the from the powers that be. Yeah, uh, I mean we're we're basically at the end of our of our third density cycle. Yeah. And that's so can we pause here for a second because this is really the crux of it that I think people need to understand who are in this and that's why I, on my title I put the truth behind the great awakening because this is kind of the truth of what's happening. Um, so you said Mr. Fox that third density is the density of choice and it's also right. the, the density of not really knowing. Right. Correct? It's just making right. choices. Yeah and, and also you know our planet planet earth you know, it was decided that when it when it transitions into the next density and the fourth density, it's going to transition into a positive planet. So it's going to transition into fourth density positive. It could just have, have e as easily transitioned into fourth density negative. But the one thing that is assured here is that when our when we exit third density, which could be very shortly we're going to transition into a completely positive planet. So it means that there, once the planet transitions into the fourth density positive, there is going to be no room for disharmony. That's the beauty of, of, of fourth density positive. It is, it's, it, Ra says it's a hundred times more positive than anything we've ever experienced. So planet. question, a lot of people in this community, Mr. Fox, have been talking about the Earth splitting into two. That's not correct, is it? No. So so when the planet when the planet goes into fourth density positive, there can be no third density beings that haven't graduated into fourth density positive. They cannot live on this planet. Right. And and there's reasons for that. One reason is that that at the very beginning of a fourth density cycle we don't know how to become invisible to and not be detected by third density beings. And that's very important because if a fourth density being reveals itself or a fourth density culture reveals itself to a third density culture, it infringes upon their free will. And that's one of the most important things in this galaxy or in this universe during third density is that that the beings that are in third density should not have their free will uh, infringed upon so everyone that whether you didn't graduate and have to do a third density cycle over again or whether you're fourth graduated the fourth density negative those two types of of beings have to vacate the planet and who knows how that's going to happen but we can't live together for for probably thousands of years until but eventually eventually third density life third density beings can exist on the on the the surface of earth in in that third density realm and there could be a whole civilization that also is on fourth density the fourth density positive part of the planet because you could say that the planet is is wrapped in you know eight different layers and yeah. all those different all those are different densities that stack on top of one another is mr fox is there currently because the and an octarian anthology actually speaks of this as well is there currently a fourth density positive civilization amongst us right now that we don't see there there no but you know children that are people that were born i think it was um 10 15 or 20 years ago right around there could have dual a dual density body so you could have both third and fourth density characteristics within you so let's let's pause there. it's like you know my nephew and my nieces my nephew's 10 my uh -huh. niece is eight and the other one is about to turn two so they came uh -huh. into this world looking, third, both. looking third density but actually already ready in a fourth density body ready to go right. uh-huh yeah so what would be some of the indications of that so to put that into things of people we've lost a bit now 
might be thinking, well, okay, that's all very well talking about third density body, fourth density body, but a lot of people, we've heard a lot of people talking about they're already in 5D and there's so much misunderstanding around it. So give give us some sort of practical examples of what that might be indicated by. You know, I'm, I, it's something I haven't really looked into much. It, it doesn't, you know, that's something that doesn't really mean much to, to me. Well, um, I would say for me, the thing that I think I noticed with my nephew and nieces is they, their level of understanding is very different. Than- very, you know, very kind, very gentle, um, you know, empath, as you can say, that people there are very empathic. You know, they could they could have their, their fourth density bodies or, but, you know, at the end of the day, to me, that, that that really doesn't matter, you know, because there's also wander, what they call wanderers here, right? the raw yeah. material and the Cassiopeia material both talk about wanders. You know, there, there are people here that are from sixth density that came to help those in third density. Yeah. And so, but, but you could be a third density, you could be a sixth density wanderer having this third density experience and you can get stuck just like anyone else. So you can walk around all day and say, oh, I'm a sixth density wanderer. At the end of the day, it doesn't fucking mean anything. Because can we, okay, let's you pause can, there for a second, could, Mr. Fox. You Fox. could end up getting stuck like anyone else because you still, as a sixth density wanderer, you can still not graduate out of, out of this place. Yeah, or yeah. even worse, Ra talk, tells a story about how they during their third density cycle they had two wanderers that came in from sixth density that came to help but they ended up starting a cult and they ended up graduating fourth density negative and they said they were extremely distressed and surprised when they basically woke up and were like holy shit, we just got stuck in fourth density negative we were sixth density positive we came down here to help, but we screwed up so bad, we have to go through a fourth density cycle, go back to third density, graduate again, and move our way back up. And so when people are coming saying, I'm an incarnation of this and that, and I'm a, a fifth dimension, whatever, fuck it. You can make the same mistakes the lowest level of third density can make because you come here with the same veil over your consciousness as all of us have. And so I don't wanna, I I just, I roll my eyes at that. It doesn't fucking matter. I will say, I'm so glad Mr. Fox that you said this because one of the first things you said to me after we got to know each other, you said, you're a wanderer. And I was like, what the hell does that mean? And you explained it and it made things make sense in my life, but you were very quick to say, but don't even pay attention to that. Just know that's why certain things have happened to you. That's why you get attacked all the time. That's why you wake up with bruises and scratches. That's why your life has been the way it is. But you need to focus on your karmic duty and third density. And Mr. Fox, hallelujah. Thank you for saying that. Because how many people do we know in this world truth or community that are like i'm the best spiritual person that ever existed i'm this i'm that i'm so high up in dimension that i'm above all of you that's a surefire ticket to the negative side isn't it totally i mean it really it makes people rest on their laurels you yeah. know and not really do the work because we all have to do the work regardless of what density we're here from yeah and uh yeah and it's just no it we because- actually why, why i would say that wanderers have it a lot harder than your normal everyday third density, you know, entity looking to graduate to fourth because we get um, people that are wanderers get get attacked more. Yeah, they have more anomalous stuff that comes up. They have more health issues because th- this is not their native vibration. Yeah, they, they tend to be a little sort of outcasts. Um, people don't quite understand. Um, uh, it, there's so many things that that people that are wanderers have to go through that that others don't you know we have we definitely have to deal with so so many more attacks from well, you talk about the naivety too like so with raw like you've said this before that because wanderers are coming down from like a sixth density consciousness that you would think that they would be more um aware of of the negative and the scams but because they've been so separated for so long from third density that they have this almost naivety to them that people are going to be good and that they can trust people and that's something you said something to me a few days ago um 
because you've known me for such a long time, Mr. Fox, and you've actually literally seen me get physically attacked by spirits, and you've seen me get attacked. Um, Catherine and I have gone through a lot of the same attacks on even on the platform, and you said something interesting, Mr. Fox. You said you've survived all these huge attacks, and now what they're doing is sending little attacks your way because they're playing on your sympathy. And that really was like an aha moment for me because that goes back into that naivety again, that we have a sympathy, we have empathy. And that can be the same for a third density, high priority soul that's about to graduate fourth density, that this, this empathic sensitive side of you can be manipulated by those yeah. who are of the negative. And so to have this information just makes you wiser when you're going about your day. It doesn't mean you're superior to anybody else. It just makes you better prepared for what's going to come your way. And so I think that's so, I'm so glad. I mean, Catherine, you know, as well as I do, that there are a lot of assholes in this community that think they're like the guru and the shit. And they're just not, <laughs> they're forming their own cults. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, one of the things I'm so fascinated about by this material is, Mr. Fox, have you got any examples, YouTube-friendly words that we're allowed to use, that can give an example of how the Law of One material can help us understand this current stuff that's been coming to the surface? Because even though we talk about what's been happening over the last few years, anyone who's been studying it at all knows that these nefarious activities have been going on forever. It's just that a lot of us haven't been aware of it. Right. So well, yeah. So, so we're in a unique situation because not all planets will have the opportunity for what they call a dual harvest. You know, a lot of planets will, it'll just be, you know, the opportunity to graduate uh, service to others. And that's just, you know, there'll, there'll be no opportunity for, for people to graduate to, you know, service to self. But we have, we have a mixed situation here where it's set up to where we're, we're mixed together with both people trying to graduate service to others and people trying to graduate service to self, you know, and then of course there's the gray area in between where people that don't even know what's going on here. Yeah. The people that don't know that there's a choice, whether mm -hmm. conscious or unconscious, they're just going about their daily life. There's no spirituality that exists within their life really, or it's this very superficial level. And so since we're, where we have this this uh, this option for for us to go either direction, of course that's going to cause turmoil, yeah. Because the negative, the service to self, has to harvest through enslaving others through the bat through that battle, yeah, bringing pain and strife to people, and then trying to control people, and so. That's why we have so much chaos now. We're entering the very end of our third density cycle. So the war is heating up. Yeah. We're trying to we're trying to help others. We're trying to share information that will help others make their choice. And then once they've made their choice to move in that positive path so they can polarize enough to move into the fourth density positive cycle. But then on the other side of that, we have those that either are trying to polarize negative or people in the gray area or even people in the positive, trying to polarize positive are getting caught up and influenced by those trying to polarize negative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that's throwing them off their path. But at the same time, the people trying to polarize negative are doing what they do best to create more chaos. Yeah. But the good thing is that this, this planet, Ra, Ra, both the Ra and Cassiopeians say that this planet is mostly positive. Most of the people on this planet are positively oriented people. But the unfortunate thing is it only takes a few service to self people to screw that all up. Yeah. There's very few people on this planet now that are going to polarize service to sell but those few handful of people can cause so much chaos so anyway that's not going to stop until this planet eventually turns into fourth density positive they're never going to stop that battle they're never going to say enough is enough 
You're never, you're never going to surrender. Yeah, because you're never going to admit to others. In, in, a, in a sense, you're never going to defeat them until the whole planet changes. So if anyone thinks that, oh, this is all going to wind down and someone's, there's no such thing as surrender yeah. to someone on the path of service to self. Surrender would mean completely depolarizing. Yeah, because to, to, pol to polarize service to self, you have to be 95%. Nine, so 95% of your actions have to be service to self. On the flip yeah. side, to graduate positive service to others, you only have to be 51%. So 51% of your actions have to be towards service to others. Mm. Yeah, forty nine percent of you could be an asshole as long as fifty one percent of you, you got that right. wiggle room, right? But they say that that fifty one percent is not easy, you no. know. And when, when they say you know fifty one percent service to others, they don't mean that fifty one percent of your time you go out and you serve in a soup kitchen, you know. It's like you came here with certain talents, yeah, and those talents. You know, a musician could be could could be of service. Someone creating music or art, it could be that simple, yeah. So there's many things, many professions or many things you can do throughout your day that could be in service to others. Yeah. So Mr. Can you Fox, just explain, but, sorry, can I just want you to explain, Mr. Fox, please, about what you mean harvest? I know I said it's such an obscure term, hmm. but harvest would be, no. you know, <laughs> they're not going to come down and harvest as like, you know, chopping down plants, but that's just the term that they use, harvesting. It's like, you know, scooping us up and, and moving us into this next, into this next cycle. And that's graduation. Just, what's that? It's a graduation. Yeah. Graduation. Uh -huh. Graduating into the next cycle of, of, uh, of evolution. So is it raw that has said that, so you've spoken a lot about that the planet is going fourth density positive, right? But who says so? How do you know that? through through the raw material in the Cassiopeian. So maybe it's not, you know, maybe maybe they're wrong. But so they can see into the future, the raw material can see where we're going, yeah? Yeah. I mean they can see it's written on it's written in the planets. They say that that it's like a clock. I'm gonna it, 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 for it, it, yeah, it can it can it's got to happen. They can look at the galaxy and how, you know, these these uh these streams of, of light are coming from the galactic center and how we, our planet, through its rotation, through its spiral, through space and time, is going to enter that beam that represents fourth density positive. Yeah, and so they can see it very clearly. They say it's just like, you know, a clock hitting, hitting 12 o'clock. You know, it's yeah. that... But give or take, they say they have a very hard time interpreting interpreting time. And so, right. you know, and, and looking at, you know, they've been around for billions and billions of years. You know, to them, you know, 250 years could seem like a second to them. And so when they say, you know, it's just about to happen, you know, give or take, you know, 50, 200 years or whatever. take a century. But we're, yeah. we're off. Well, I mean, we're, I, from what I understand... We've been given extra time. Yeah, we're an extra. But so can we? But as well, you said know, those penalties. What's that? <laughs> yeah, right. Those penalties. Sort of, yeah. That's all we are. That's <laughs> yeah, but you can already see. You can already see for our fourth density influence dur at the end of this third density cycle because you know the war between. The and I say war for lack of better description, but you know, there's always going to be a battle begin again, fourth negative and fourth positive, and on up, yeah. And so, as we graduate in the fourth, as this planet graduates in the fourth density positive, we're still going to be in some battle with fourth density negative, and that's the battle for the that's the battle of consciousness or a battle of mind. And you can we'll, see we'll how that's more and for see how that, know, we'll know. I know still, well, yeah, but still that but that's starting, you know, you could say that there's a war happening right now on the internet, and it's a war for your mind. Yeah. It's a war for your consciousness. They're trying to steer you, they're trying to distract you. That's fourth, that's a fourth density battle. 
playing itself out also in third density. So yeah, so there's a bleed through now. You know, we're moving, you know, it's, it, there's that going to be a definite cross that we're going to make where, you know, we're all the way in fourth density. But during that time, third and fourth are definitely sort of crossing, very slowly crossing. And so we're going into the same battles over our consciousness as we're going to be going through in fourth density positive. We're seeing that at the end of third density cycle. So Mr. Boxco, can you, while we're talking about these battles and the, this evolution and how it's in Earth's soul contract to go positive, can we talk about the subject of hijacking that comes from the negative though? Because I think that's really important for people to hear this concept of hijacking. Because we know yeah. like 90% of the people in the truth or community are not polarizing positive intentionally. They're being used by the negative to help harvest negative is that so can we talk about what hijacking so people are aware that this is a phenomenon that absolutely happens yeah so for what i understand and this is through the cassiopeian material is that what the fourth density service to self is trying to do is to hijack this planet as it's moving into fourth density positive something that's never been done before and so that that is another battle that's going on is they're trying to throw this whole planet off course to steal it for themselves so let, let's i want that to sink into people's understanding and that's why i think catherine i've been talking about this a lot like you cannot so uh, how say you mr fox about the whole oh it's all a movie eat your popcorn sit back relax it's fine it's all taken care of is that a ploy to hijack that's how I, I mean, see it. It's a, it's a ploy for you to quit doing your work and just to wait around, I guess, you know, it's it, to me, it's just a distraction. All this, all this stuff with, with politics and, and things like that is, is just to, you know, to wear us down and to distract us from the inner work that we should be doing. Okay. So one of the questions, I've got a couple of important questions. Okay. Um, first and foremost is what can people be doing or do they need to be consciously doing something to make sure that this hijacking isn't successful is the first question. Well, the, the, to focus on your path, you know, that to, to, to maybe you know take time for yourself and to turn away from all these distractions and do you know whatever inner work that you need to do you know that's that's it in a nutshell so maintain your sovereignty basically don't just listen all <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then make sure you know it's important to take care of yourself Ra talked about how you know how they would they would go out and and during their third density cycle how they would they would go out and 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 try to help you know others um that were sort of stuck and and weren't you know doing doing the the work that that they needed to do to to get themselves you know together enough to to make the choice but that at the same time they would make sure even though they would they would enter into those people's lives where they were suffering they still made the time to nurture themselves right so you're not martyring not yourself. to do their own work but also you know to sit in their peace as well and to, and to recuperate and uh to make sure that they didn't get taken off their their path i don't know if that yeah fantastic so it's a so much similarity here between sort of other spiritual um and and ancient mystery school teachings aren't there coming through in this message uh -huh. yeah. how will we know then is does the material the raw material or the Cassiopeian boards does it actually say anything about the process so is it just a continual gradual process or is there a big bang or is there you know how will we know when we've we are in the fourth density positive how will you know you know that's 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 a great question and and that's where there's a little contradiction between 
the Cassiopeia material and the raw material. Because the raw material says that when we move into fourth density positive, that we have to leave our physical bodies. But wow. the Cassiopeians say that that we'll be able to take our bodies with us. And that's the very But isn't unique that the, the I guess in. that's the unique thing about this situation we're in. Like this is the first time a planet's been able to jump to a different density with all the living creatures on it on it in their right. bodies. Well, there, there's gonna be there, there's gonna be a choice given to some of our second density friends. They may choose to to go yeah. They may choose to go on I've already their own evolutionary cycle. They're gonna be they're gonna be able to choose to go on to their own evolutionary cycle or they could possibly choose to, to come with us and the and and the Cassiopeia say that that's up to them, you know. Um, Let's just start um, really being sweet to your pets, your animals, your <laughs> so when they choose. So when they get the choice, they're not like they're like, fuck it, I'm out of here. <laughs> like I'm gonna go. Particularly yeah. cats, because we all know cats will make choice, whatever choice is best for them, although exactly. maybe <laughs> yeah, coming with us, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. Strap so yeah, so <laughs> I'm I'm really not I'm I'm not sure how that's all gonna all that you know, how that's all gonna go down. You know? Yeah. Um but supposedly we're gonna ha we're gonna start seeing a lot more you know anomalous things starting to happen whether it be in our skies or right in front of us you know like it's gonna start getting really the, the cassiopeians say you know get ready because things are gonna start getting really weird and um it also it's funny because you know the cassiopeians have been saying for years and years and years to enjoy the show to stay out of the way yeah and have your wits about you but also you know like it's going to start getting crazy let's, let's but when they say enjoy the show it's not that this is a movie they're basically right. saying don't freak out when things start to happen that are beyond your explanation just enjoy exactly. the beautiful things you see in the sky yeah, because, uh -huh. And it's going to be quite comical to see the people going negative trying to distract us or explain some of these phenomenons. That's going to be kind of comical because we, we know they are. They're going to try to distract us from this stuff, aren't they? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. And also... China. You know, during at, dragon. <laughs> <laughs> what's that? I said they'll just blame it on balloons from China, won't they? Right. Yeah. No, I think that things are going to get weird enough where they can't... They, you're, not gonna, you're not going to be able to come up with any any excuses they're not going to be able to easy explain it away and at the same time um the cassiopeians say that that as we move forward and it's going to be in our lifetimes they assure us that within the next 20 years that the the playing field is going to be leveled what they say what that means is that we're going to be able to basically see right through people and what their intentions are that's oh, part that, of that's, that's happening part, more and more yes and yeah. that's that's part of that's part of fourth density they say as as in fourth density you can you can read the vibrational awareness and thoughts and intentions of everyone around you and so as we move into closer into fourth density no one is going to be able to lie to you anymore you know, so. I can see that happening. So many of us are, are, are at that stage already, I think. And there's loads right. of people. You can really see that ability just rising up in so many people now. Right. Yeah. And so it's just think about that. You know, if if a vast majority of us would no longer in any way, shape or form buy into any lie that was told, and how quickly we would all come on, on come uh, how quickly we would all get on the same page and how we wouldn't even feel like we needed to even do that much to counter what they're trying to do to us you know mm -hmm. it, it would be you know action but with action in inaction you know they're trying to lie to us to steer us down this path and you just look and you just decide no I'm not going to I'm not going to go there and how that just takes their power away. There's no battle anymore, you know. No, Mr. So, Fox. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Catherine. Well, I was just going to ask, uh, it's not directly related to the material, but because I know 
how long you've been studying this for, Mr. Fox, and how in depth you've gone into this and the Cassiopeians. Are there some people that have been talking out for a long while that you think have really been picking up on this information and getting it right? I yeah, I mean, there's I'm surely there's some people out there that that are. Um, but specifically, what, what are you talking about? Are there other other? Well, I'm people? talking about some. There's a lot of different people that have been um, talking about things that are coming for a long while, and you know, there's such a huge discrepancy in yeah. what people have been saying are going to happen. Are there some other people that you've been following where you're thinking, yes, they're really, and um, because I know you've got a lot of respect for the um, Law of One material and the Cassiopeia material, so are there some people? That have been speaking out not necessarily referencing those sources but you're thinking yes i really think they've been on the right track and been trying to warn us for ages yeah uh-huh there there have been you know random people here and there yeah. um they, they don't seem to stick around for very long for whatever reason yeah to yeah. so put themselves out there um in any great extent but i've definitely you know picked up on a little bit here or there you know but i you know i really I don't pay much attention. I don't watch very many, you know, YouTube channels or read much of anyone's writings, you know, in this in this time, just because I feel like that I have a lot of the information that I that I need through the Cassiopeians and the raw material in my own practices. Yeah. And just what I observe in the world, you know, that's helped me more than anything. Just taking in this information and just looking out there and, and watching it all play out. And, and it helps me to, to really relax into what's happening, given the understanding that I've, that I've gotten through this, this material and that this is all in a natural process, you know, not that this happens a lot in other planets because we're in a very unique situation. Normally it's not like this. Normally it's not so chaotic. You would say that this only happens like, you know, such a small percentage of the time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's because, so I want to, I want to kind of hit because we, we see so many of these infiltrators saying that oh you know the controllers are gone it's all just pretend what do you say about that mr fox just to i just I, that's ridiculous yeah that's uh -huh. ridiculous from my understanding uh, that's ridiculous yeah. yeah and and a good guy would never go to this extent to lie to you and to right. fool you so yeah. I want people to understand that, like, we're not, this is, and people are like, oh, no, we're already in, we're already in because the the controllers are gone. But no, 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 we'll know we're in fourth density when there's no more controllers, correct? Correct, yeah. And um, Ra explains, um, you know, briefly, because they say that they have a very hard time describing fourth density positive uh, to people who, who haven't experienced it before. But they they have explained what what it's like, and they you know they say it's a density where disharmony cannot exist in any way so whatsoever. Um, they say you know it's a it's it's a plane of existence where um, we have no disease, um, and like I said, it's a it's a plane where we we any disagreements are immediately harmonized. Mm -hmm. uh it's it's a it's it's a plane of of compassion and and understanding of the sorrows of third density so it's a, it's a time where you're you're looking back at your third density life or you know other third density planets with compassion and complete understanding of how how tough it was um it's a it's you know it's a plane of, of striving towards wisdom and, and light you know so until you see until you see that we're not there yeah it's it's, it's completely it's 100 percent completely different than what we're experiencing now there will be no doubt whatsoever whether we're in fourth density positive or not there'll be no speculation we'll either we're going to either be there or not and until we get there we're going to be experiencing disharmony and strife and a battle for our consciousness. Yeah. And so I would say the best thing to do is limit your distractions of all this crazy stuff going around, do your own inner work. And, and that's it. Everything else will, will solve itself when 
the time is right. And using that friction provided, using this time as an opportunity to use that friction. And just, yeah, yourself. right. And you use this opportunity to be of greater service to others. And that's what, that's what the Cassiopeians would say. And the Rob and Rob would say is that, you know, really what's happening now is all this turmoil is just giving you greater opportunity to be of service to others. So yeah. look at it, look at all this crazy stuff happening as just a, an opportunity. Like how amazing is that? Because when you do graduate into fourth density, positive, your evolution happens so slowly. Think about it because all the things here that trigger us, cause us pain, cause others pain, and all the different types of pain that you can have, emotional, spiritual pain, physical pain, all that is, there's, it's, it's lessons offered to you. Yeah, it's a chance for you to make, use your free will in service of others. Yeah, but when we are no longer having to deal with any of those challenges, what makes us grow? Yeah, there's not a whole lot. And the growth happens very, very, very slowly. And that's why there are people lining up, spirits, entities lining up to come down here to be incarnated because of how it exponentially ramps up our opportunity to grow. Even, even those wanderers coming down from sixth density, it's offering them great opportunity of growth that they normally could not get in their sixth density cycle. There's but no it takes being, it takes going it takes getting all the way to sixth density to gain enough uh, to be naive enough to come back down. Basically, is what they say. Fifth density people are like ah no thanks. <laughs> Fourth density for sure are like no we remember that all too well. Nope. You're not gonna it's like it's back like there. the Indian data. So, yeah. data. Nope. <laughs> it, data. It, it takes two it takes two whole cycles major you know billion year three well. Fourth density is on average approximately three million years. So it takes it takes a social memory complex about three million years to move into fifth density. So think about that. So 30 million years go by, you're still like, no, I'm not going back down there. And then however long fifth density is, you know, another 30 million years, nah, I still, I've had enough of that. It takes all the way, you know, 60 million plus years to get to sixth density. And then you'll say, oh, maybe I'll go down and try that out again. <laughs> just ask one more question. Yeah. This is, this is really fascinating. Can I just ask one more question, Mr. Fox? Uh, sure. Um, so going back to the fact that in um service to others is really crucial, and yeah. going back to the fact that in fourth density positive, it's yeah. impossible basically to be dishonest to tell lies because everyone will see straight through it. So you wouldn't be there in the first place. Yeah, you right. And you and plus you would have no reason to tell lies. I mean, it's not it's not a place that you would want to, uh, you know, because yeah. there's there's absolute and total harmony. You know, when you lay in your your life, you you live ninety thousand years. You know, one yeah. one body in with fourth density positive ninety thousand years. So isn't that quite telling now when people are sitting there, there's a lot of people that I don't know what to believe. I don't know what to think. Well, the yeah. the white hats have got to act in this way and be deceptive to, um, you know, play their games. But if they surely someone who was moving towards false density positive wouldn't use lies to achieve their aims or deception. They would not. There we go then, folks. Now, they could withhold information. Yes, completely. But they wouldn't deliberately use lies and manipulation to do it. That well, way. I mean, yes, yes and no, because, you know, that, that's, that's, that's complicated. But they wouldn't uh, hurt people. They wouldn't go out there and deliberately hurt people and say, oh, no, it's uh, part of the greater good. No, they would, they, they would not do they that. They would not yes. dress up as black hats and invade Mar-a-Lago, would they? No. But at the same time, you know, if, if a lie being told was done in the spirit of, protection. of protecting someone, then 
you know, I think that that lie is necessary. It's, it's, it's neutralized. And that, you know? I think we can understand that, but what we're talking about are these grandiose actions that the negative side is taking. And then there are people in the truth or community reading their tarot cards or whatever saying, Oh no, that's the white hats. Wink, wink. It's all, but it's not, they wouldn't grandiosely be out there, you know, causing a pain onto other people and confusing other people if they were going positive. We're talking about these big things we're seeing I that we're know, seeing in our community of people saying, that's that, oh, that's the white hats just dressing up. But if they're hurting somebody else right, in, in the cause of deception, then that is not positive, that they're not going positive. And so people just need to have some common sense with that. You yeah. know, um, if, they, if there's an entity out there hurting somebody else, then that's not it's not service to others. Right. Right. They're not dressing up as black hats. They're not go That's not, that's ridiculous. That's delusional thinking. And that's part of the hijacking to believe that. So right. yeah, I think that's what we're getting at. Yeah. Cause I understand like we've talked about that Mr. Fox before. It's like if you're out in public and your friend meets you and the outfit they have on makes them look horrendous. You would not say to them, oh, my God, you look awful in the middle of public where they can't they have no way of changing. Right. Like that would hurt. That would hurt them. You know, yeah. so there is withholding. If you use something little like that, there is withholding information in it's that's not going to withholding that saying that information isn't going to help that person. It could hurt them and it's innocent. So you keep it back. Like, you know, it's little stuff like that, that or if or if somebody is trying to capture someone and hurt them and that person hides and someone knows where they are you're gonna lie you're not gonna say oh yeah they're under the bed no you're like you think about like Anne frank right like you're not gonna be like oh yeah they're hiding up in that attic no you would lie to protect that person so that's yeah. i think that uh, those... okay Sorry? Yeah. yeah nothing okay <laughs> so anyway is there anything you want to close out with Catherine? i know we've gone over an hour now so i think this is absolutely fantastic i think mr fox has given people some really useful practical advice in terms of you know okay what can you do what does this mean to you and um, we're going to put the links below for um where people can get extra information so really my final question for this part one mr fox is there anything else you wanted to leave people with no not necessarily i mean there's so much more we could talk about but um we'll just save it for next time and also, all I'm saying for this is going to be aired on both Catherine and my channel at the exact same time. Um, of course, Catherine's five hours ahead, so it's not going to, it's just going to, it's going to pop up at the same time. One o'clock her time, 8 a.m. my time. So whichever channel you're watching this on, if there are any questions you have regarding this, I would say, Catherine, should we ask them to leave the questions on whichever channel and we can collect Absolutely. them? Absolutely. And we can cover those in part two. Yeah. 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 For Thank sure. you so much, Mr. Fox. You're welcome. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. I'll see you yeah. soon. <laughs> okay. so, Thanks, bye. Bye. bye, everybody. Bye.